Now, was there ever a sense that running the truck series was going to be any sort of demotion or step back? Or did the fact that you were running pretty doggone good in that car, in that truck, make up for that? Well, it's not. You know, I mean, it, when you start racing, you do the local tracks. You work your way up, obviously, up to the cup stuff. And then it did go back, obviously, to the uh, Xfinity cars for a little bit and then in the trucks. So I love the trucks. I love watching the, tra the trucks race. I did run some when they were first starting uh, for uh, Kurt Rourke in and did the winter heat stuff before the series started and ran races. So I just enjoy racing. So it doesn't matter really what you're in. You, just, you want to be competitive. Yeah. But um, so no, I didn't think it was a motion by, by any means uh, to, um, to go into trucks because there are a lot of great racers in there. And especially at the time I was doing it, we had a bunch of old guys, young guys in the middle of the guys. And I thought that part was great. Okay. Now, 2005 in the truck series, you had a pretty good season. You finished 10th in points. But in 2006, you won five races. You collect 13 top five finishes and finished second to Todd Bodine for the championship. What was the difference between those two years? I think, I think part of the big difference was is that uh, when I first started with Bill Davis there, it was just a kind of a part-time deal where, you know, he called me to do the Michigan race. And I said, of course, I'm going to do that. It's my hometown. So I, I zip over there. We do that race. And then the following week, he calls me and Hey, you want to do this next race? I said, yeah. Well, this goes on for about three or four weeks. And then I started laughing. I go, hey, you know, can you give me a little more heads up? I don't want to wait till <laughs> Thursday and yeah, go do yeah. this. So anyways, we, we kind of laughed about it. So I told him, I'm just going to show up until you tell me not to come anymore. And that's that's pretty much how it started. But but going into that, you know, that second year there, there was a crew chief change um, late in the season before and then going into that year. And, and we felt we had a pretty good uh, direction of what we were going to do and and we did. We ran real well. 2008, the truck championship literally comes down to the last lap at Homestead. You finish seventh, one spot ahead of Ron Hornaday, and that gives you a seven-point margin of victory over him. Was running that close for the title fun, or was it nerve-wracking? <laughs> both. <laughs> both, a lot of both, you know. I, I, I've been fortunate enough in my uh, career to run in – different style of championships and I've at that point in time I've won three of them in three different you know major um, series and so I've lived through that I've lived through the fact that uh, even in ASA um, we lost the points by two points in the following year we won it so it was just one of those deals we did that with Todd we were right there running for the championship we had a couple of part failures that took us out of that and there's nothing you can do about that so you just you just kind of live through it and, and go I've been in that position before, but you know, when you're in the higher end, especially in the NASCAR deal, it's uh, it's a little bit more intense, I guess you could say. Was it nerve wracking? Absolutely, especially during the race because we weren't that good. Ron was better than us all day long, and uh, you know, kind of late in the race, we did a couple of you know some pitch strategy stuff that got us up front, and and then late, late in the running, you know, Ron came in for tires. I figured he was going to stay out. If he stayed out, it's going to come in. Uh, when he came in, we were supposed to come in, I stayed out. And I was just like, if I, if I come in and put on tires, it's going to be just like the rest of the day. We're just going to be behind them, can't stay with them, things of this nature. Uh, so we, we stayed out to take a chance. I mean, we're, what else are you going to do? You know. So, yeah. I mean, obviously it worked out. If it was a lap or two more, um, we, we wouldn't have won it. But in, a, in the same token, the race still ends when it's going to end. But it was just a, a circumstance where a lot more people stayed out than I think that they thought that benefited us. And it, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely nerve wracking because especially at the last lap, um, uh, the old nine was, he was coming, he got beside me in one and two. And I thought I had to beat him to beat Ron because it's one of those deals. You always yeah. like that cushion. You're like, yeah, yeah. I knew really looking back that I knew whoever finished ahead of who was going to win it was three points coming in the race. But still in your mind, you think when that guy goes by it, you're not sure who won it now. Yeah. And he, cause I, cause I don't know about the laps let. And it was just one of those deals where he got by and I was, I was, I was like, oh man, you know, I was still confident. I thought we won it, but you don't know until they tell you. And they took way too long to tell us, but it, uh, yeah. <laughs> but it was, so that was like, oh, yeah. maybe we did win it. But, um, uh, we did. And that was, that was pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, after everything you've been through on the cup side, 
what did it feel like and what did it mean to you to be on the mountaintop again? Well, I mean, you're, you, you go through all those stages where you run good and then you don't. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been with teams that were good and then teams that you weren't good. And it, it, it's one of those things that when a driver, you look back and you look at these teams and you go, well, how come that guy ran really good there and he can't run there, he can't? You know, the driver's just, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big element, but it's not the, the big picture. The team is what makes a difference. And I think when you, you go, I mean, we had pretty su good success that last year we ran in a cup series with Valve Lane. And, uh, and then, I go, you know, we run fourth down at um, Homestead on the last, uh, last race for, the, for my mm -hmm. cup stuff, or, or not last race, for a full season. And it was, you know, I felt good about that. And, uh, you know, you kind of move forward. I really didn't try to find a cup right at that point in time. I was, you know, tired of the travel, tired of this. I wanted to run shorter races, to be honest. I, I <laughs> you know, I just love running the short races, whether it be at your local track or whether it be in the trucks or even the Xfinity at that matter. If it's just shorter races are, are good to do. With all that being said, before you ever went to Homestead, you'd announced that you would not be returning to Bill's team the following season. What happened? Well, there were, there was a lot happening, you know. I, I think the sport had was going through that change of, uh, you know, money was going to be key on on drivers, things of that nature. Uh, myself and Bill Davis were trying to get together with um, trying to figure out what we were going to do for '09, and it, those conversations weren't happening. Like we set up a meeting, it didn't happen. We did this, it didn't happen, and then later on, I I kind of heard and saw that there was some internal. Um, things going on there and at that point in time I really thought he was going to close so at that point in time of just trying and trying for four or five weeks trying to you know figure out what we're going to do I just took it upon myself to take myself out of that loop because I, I that was what my feeling was is that if you're going to have a conversation to move forward that means that something's going on yeah. and it, it was so I just said look I'm just not coming back and a couple of people after that had talked to me about doing some stuff. Some people before that talked to me about doing some stuff. But at that point in time, I really was just going to retire and just uh, maybe do, you know, a couple of races here and there, go back and run uh, my late model, do some uh, super modified racing and things of that nature. So there wasn't a plan going into that. And then, of course, that did change once I announced that. Then there was some interest in some people. But um, um, and then it just kind of happened pretty fast for the for the following year which didn't end up going where we wanted to go but um but that wasn't my plan my plan was just to you know cut back on my schedule now did that change the way that you looked at that championship was there more satisfaction there or maybe a little bit of frustration with with the situation how did you look at the championship well the, the, you know the championship was based off that year meant we looked at it and you know, obviously, we're extremely happy about it and, uh, and real proud of that. You know, just to, to, one, just to have the opportunity to run for a championship is in a higher level yeah. is almost good enough. You know, just to have that opportunity to do that. Obviously, winning is uh, an extra bonus. So, I, you know, we're, we're extremely proud about um, having that. It was, I think, Bill and Gail's first championship in the NASCAR uh, series. So that was. Uh, you know, pretty amazing. It did. It meant a lot to me. I said that in my thing. It meant a lot to me to to win that for them, and uh, it is as much or maybe maybe more for them to you know get that because they've been in the sport for a long time and they've they've done a lot for the sport and things of this nature. And it was uh, you know it's what we were hired to do is go win it. So you look at that aspect on the personal side of it, absolutely it means a ton. Okay. During your time, <clears throat> during this time, you were going through this, but deciding to leave and all that. Was the deal with Red Horse already on the table or not? Well, I mean, there was people asking about different things because it, it, and at first it catches you off guard because you don't know what's even happening in your own team. And so, I mean, yeah, that there there was conversations where people had asked, well, what are you going to do? And I was, I was like, well, I'm going to stay with Bill. And then when that happened, um, those conversations picked up a little bit and I, I actually, I, I struggled with even going to do that. And, but, you know, they said, look, you know, you bring who you want to bring, you do this and do that. Well, when I know that uh, 
uh, the race team was going to close. Then a bunch of us guys from the championship team went over there to do that. But, you know, and that was the goal. The goal was go win the championship. And it was just one of those things that once you got in there in all this, then it, it's, they started micromanaging, not letting you do the things that, that Bill Davis let us do. And I think with Bill letting us do a lot of the things that, you know, their the entire race team wanted to do, whether it was the cup or the trucks, you know, we had three trucks there. They were allowing us to do the things that we wanted to do. And some of it, you know, could be different than other teams do. Some of it is just doing stuff in house. And that was a big benefit. And then when we moved over there to do that, um, that was the agreement, but then they, they tied your hands behind your back and it made it very difficult. So it was, uh, was it wasn't as much fun as the year yeah, before, but, but you know, you, your goal is to go out there and be competitive and, and, um, you, and just do your job and do the best that you can. Was financing a, an issue right from the very start or did that develop as the season progressed? I don't think finances were an issue. I mean, we had times, you know, everybody wants a big sponsor, don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But we had a lot of part sponsors, things of this nature that we were bringing there. Then we, we were getting kind of pushed off on certain items that are good, good items. And they were like, well, I can get this for free. And I go, well, there's a reason why it's for free. It's not good. You know, it's not as good. Or, or, or we had other yeah. deals that way and they wanted a decal on a trailer. Nope, we're not doing that. I'd rather pay full price. So there, there was a lot of that going on. I mean, and I, you know, it's not an excuse for our side because it's not. That's just the way it was. And, you know, so we just dealt with that. We dealt with a lot of it. We didn't feel it was going to make a huge difference on our um, um being competitive, I, I thought maybe it'd be a couple of spots, but and even when that whole thing came down and he let us all go, we were still six in points, and we, and, and I, we were closer to the point leader than it was a previous year when we won it. So I don't, I don't really know. There, there were some different conflicts and different uh, point of views of where we wanted to be, and I think he decided he, he would just say, "I'm not going to do this," and. He'd rather have somebody come in and pay for the ride than it would be to yeah. to pay and go race and go win it. You know, it's about winning a championship. Yeah. And I think at that point in time that I think he decided that that wasn't worth the, um, the extra effort to do that. You went to Texas, you finished fourth, and that was your last race with that team. And then you proceeded to have a pretty doggone bad week. It, <laughs> <laughs> That might be a little understatement, <laughs> but yeah, it was a, it was a, it was one of those deals that you know you're going down the road and you, you know now you're dealing with contract stuff and you're dealing with this and then um, so you're on the phone and uh, uh, Russ, guy that worked for for many many years, was taking my bus. Was well, the original plan we were going to Michigan, so we didn't know that this was done, and so we we started heading up that way on. Monday, I think it was Monday. Well, he left early. I was going to leave on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. Or we were going to leave on Tuesday. Well, he wanted to take off early while he had a tire um, blow it on a motorhome. And so he wrecked a motorhome. And then now I'm like, oh no, that ain't good. So then I finished packing every, my, my stuff and went up. That was in West Virginia. And, um, and so I picked him up and looked at the bus and I was like, oh, that ain't good. And, <laughs> you know, so we proceeded on up to up to Michigan, I raced Wednesday night, and then we turned around and run, I think Wednesday night, run on Kalamazoo or something, I don't, I don't remember exactly, and then run the Super Modified at Sat or Friday night at Toledo, which at that point in time, I was gonna run the truck series on Saturday, but that all unfolded that whole week, so wrecked the bus, you know, Take lost it. a job, yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll say, yeah. and then Saturday night, my home track, we got in a pretty bad uh, uh, wreck with the Super, and uh, kinda, kind of whacked myself around pretty bad, took, took about four months off the race. And so, so then I, you know, so like you say, the whole week was, got the bus and we got, uh, let go of the job thing and then uh, wrecked the modified and spent four days in the hospital and, and then uh, lost the race car and all this. So it was, it was a rough week. <laughs> what do you remember, if anything, about the accident? Well, I'm, I, I remember hitting a guy, guy in front of me just got loose as all. I mean, he didn't do anything wrong. and. But I was coming by him pretty quick, and it uh, uh, his right rear got up in front of my left rear in an open wheel car, 
and so the car went up in the air and I went in what we'll consider driver's side door because those yeah. cars are a little situated a little different and I mean I remember hitting a wall I mean I remember seeing that tire fold up and and then my next memory was a uh, bunch of workers there trying to put out a fire and trying to cut the roof of my car off or the cage of my car off and of course at that point in time I was yelling at them to not cut the roof of my car <laughs> and you know it's a racer coming out into you when yeah, you wake yeah, up so yeah. and it was just one of those deals that you're just sitting there not you know I knew it wrecked and it, I'm kind of looking around and um, I saw my mom standing in front of the car and, and I still laugh about this a little bit but she doesn't but I do and I go I go, crap, that must have been bad if you're standing there. She <laughs> never comes out of the grandstand yeah, yeah. after the race. And this is on the racetrack. And she goes, oh, it's pretty bad. Go, oh, I'm all right. And she goes, well, I'm not. And I said, that'll be all right. But it was, uh, but getting out of the car was tough because I figured I was going to get out of the car. Man, I went to reach out and got my hands right about here. And I realized I busted up pretty bad. You can hear bones and stuff wow. moving when you're in. And uh, so I broke all the ribs on my left side, both my collarbones, my wrist, destroyed my shoulder, uh, burnt my arm up, and then head. Uh, later, lung and kidney were bleeding and stuff like that. So I was, I was whacked up pretty good there. So you got in the ambulance, and didn't you say you kind of bottomed out in the ambulance a well, little we, bit? You know, I got in the ambulance. I, I could breathe, but just, you know, at this point in time, it's starting to hurt. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you're sitting in a car, you're still just numb, but started hurt a little bit and then uh, I told the guy, he says, I need to, I need to sit up a little bit because I said, getting to where I can't breathe. And then he's, he's, I don't know if he's, I think he was arguing with me just probably because I was mad, but I was <laughs> trying to get up. He's yeah. trying to keep me down and I just, I finally told him, I go, look, you don't set me up. You're going to, you're going to have to start a lot of work here. Um, Cause I'm getting, I'm, I'm, I'm getting like, I'm feeling like I'm underwater. I'm starting to not be able to breathe. So I started grabbing shelves. So, sit up and uh, oh which which hurt because I got a lot of broken stuff but he finally did set me up and then they picked the pace up going to the hospital but it was just my lung filling up with uh, with blood is what we've ended up figuring out but this is one side it just made it really hard to breathe how long were you, well how long were you in the hospital and how long did it take before we started feeling like Johnny Benson again um, I was in the hospital for four days mm -hmm. or three of them in a in the good side, I guess we'll call it. And then they moved me over to a, uh, a private room. But I would I would say it was about a day and a half. Then I felt normal as far as my head and things of that nature. I mean, obviously, you're going to put you on some medication and stuff like that. And so, I mean, I was kind of making some jokes here and there. And everybody was like, yeah, he's pretty normal at this point in time. But, you know, phys on the physical side of things, it took a, took a good bit. But um, yeah, mentally, I was in uh, um, good you know, good good spirits. I mean, I figure as long as you don't mess your head up too bad, yeah. you can find people to fix the rest, yeah. which is which is what I did. I had some good people that that took care of it down here. Actually, flew uh, back home and got the majority of my medical work done down here. They they helped me get through the first part, and then I came back down. Here. You had talked about or thought about retiring, but you came back in two thousand. The, well, you came back the following season. Um, because you'd been injured so badly, was was obviously you didn't retire at that point. What what kept you? What brought you back? Well, I'm going to rephrase the retirement part. <laughs> I was going to rephrase the retirement part that okay. I wanted to do was yeah. Cut back. not 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 NASCAR so much. It's yeah. not, it didn't have anything to do with NASCAR. It was just the the full schedule of running you know all these races and doing all the travel and things yeah, of this yeah, nature I mean, times are changing during that point in time and i i was um i wouldn't say getting wore out over it i was just i had enough of it right and so i was still gonna race i just didn't know what you know there was uh some opportunities to do something i know me and uh Kyle Bush and Toyota we had it we were working on a deal to move forward and it just didn't it didn't happen that, that was a finance thing they were um, one of the sponsors fell through and we didn't make that happen. So if, if that was a case um, to do that with Kyle as a full-time deal when he was you know, starting to truck stuff up and, and he was having pretty good success, I, I would have been very interested in doing that. Anything else I probably wasn't going to, but, um, but I was still going to run my late model. I was still going to run the Super and, and things of that nature and just 
do the travel on the plans that I wanted to do. If I wanted to go here, I'd go do that. If I didn't want to go, I wasn't going to go. Um, I wasn't going to go run for the points aspect of things. Although I'd still like to win a championship in the ISMA and the Super Modified. So, you know, with four, I've got four, and they're all in different uh, categories. So that's, you know, something I'm pretty proud of. But the Super would be kind of cool because my dad raced Supers for a long time. So you were satisfied with not running NASCAR as much because you were just going to go have fun as opposed to getting in the grind every week and running for points and running for championships and filling sponsors' uh, needs or obligations or whatever. You were just going to go have fun. Is that what Well, I, they're, they're all fun. <laughs> I always well, said they're all fun. Yeah, yeah, Racing yeah. is fun. I never, I never really looked at it as I have to do this for a living. I didn't look at it that way. I did it because I loved racing. And I was just fortunate enough being in good enough places that I was able to make a living doing it. But um, no, I, I like the competition. But when you get into the bigger series, you're dealing with a lot more people. And it's not that I don't feel like I'm a people person, but I wanted to cut those people down. <laughs> it just, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And you're just, uh, you know, you're constantly getting pulled in different directions while you're trying to concentrate on your, your competition side of it. And, and I like working on a car. I like that part of it. So I, I'd rather, much rather work with four or five people on a car yeah. than it just a, a lot of people. Now, when you're doing those series, you need a lot of people. You have to do it that way. And, and it's awesome. You meet a lot of great people and you can work through that. It was just that I was, I was just ready to um, do it with minimum and have more, not control, but more fun working on a car. You know, when you're in a cup and all that, you can't work on your stuff. You know, you're, you're just there. Yeah. They had a deal to run the trucks again in 2012, I think. But the deal fell through. So as you just sort of explained, you probably didn't mind that too much because of your interest in other things. Or, or was that a good deal for you not to be involved in that? Well, I mean, it, it, the, the situation had to be right for me to, <clears throat> to do a deal to go do that. And, and it just... It wasn't, so I, I didn't even um, even look to do a couple of part-times, you know. there's I didn't want to do that. There's uh, yeah. some people called and wanted me to do a, you know, a start and park and things of this nature, and that doesn't, that doesn't fit in my category. I don't, uh, I know the teams need it at certain parts. I know that there's certain areas where that is good for them. I, I just didn't feel it was good for me, so I didn't, uh, you know, they wanted to use my past champions provisional and things of this nature. And I said, look, I'm not gonna go down there for three days yeah. to run three laps and you give me a little money and I go home. I just, uh, my point was, is I liked the racing. I didn't like the travel. <laughs> so for me to go do that, yeah. I said, it didn't make any sense. So, um, of course, after you turn a couple of those down then people stop asking, but that, but that was kind of the goal on it. Right. How did it come about that you started working for the appeals panel? That now, was that the National Appeals Panel? That yes. Was cup stuff? And, it was. Okay. Well, it was everything, I think. I, meant, yeah. uh, I, don't, I don't know. I was on there quite a bit. They didn't really call. Um, and then we started getting some um, cases, I guess, where, you know, I, I was involved in. And it, but it's multiple people. It's not. It's just not one. You know, there's at least three when you go through it. And, and you know, I, I didn't. I don't know how I got on that, tell you the truth. I think it was just, uh, they yeah. says, hey, we're going to put you on the list. You want to be on it? And I says, well, what's it involved? And he says, well, not a whole lot in the beginning. And I said, okay, I, I said, whatever, you know. And so then uh, when it did start getting involved, I, I didn't mind doing it, but it was, it's always one of those deals when something comes up, but it's all the people that you know and things that yeah. nature and that every everybody works under gray rules it don't matter where you're at <laughs> and it's just a matter of at what extent is it too far over the gray and into the bad side it's like a half take of gas you know on this side yeah. it's yeah it's yeah. you know on this side and so um so when you start working on those appeals you're getting hammered from both sides you get <laughs> you know you got nascar side of it and then you got their side of it and most of the time thank god at the time that just come up the, the people that are involved don't know who's going to do it, so they can't have any conversations with you ahead of time. But, um, and I mean, it went well. I meant you're, it's, it's hard to make a, 
I don't know if there's ever a right decision, but you, but you do have to manage this. I mean, if you're going to put this race team out of business, I don't, I think that's foolish. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, it's like, okay, do I get a ticket or I go to jail? Well, yeah, everybody wants a ticket, the ticket they can live with. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> some people want you in jail. So I mean, yeah. uh, you're, yeah. you're kind of going through all those different things and it, it, it became a little harder to do because once you're over that, then you're going to deal with it from the outside and it, and it hadn't been horrible but there, there was one particular case that they never come up with a, a conclusion that they did anything wrong but yet they were kind of pushing us to put them in jail per se and we didn't agree with that and it and it was the first time that we had that happen and um at that point in time i was like i said i don't mind doing this but i felt like we were put in a position that that we shouldn't have been put in based off of the side of the fence that we were on to help this. Um, they did, they did honor our decision and all that. But it, I just, I just at that point in time was like, I don't, I don't like the conflict. So I didn't, I didn't really want to carry on with it. No matter what happened, you were going to make somebody mad. Basically. Well, you, yeah, but they're they're already mad because they got caught. We'll say. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's how mad yeah. are they going to be and how bad it was. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I mean, it was just one of those deals that. You don't, um, you know, I'm just a racer. I don't, I don't want to sit on one side and, you know, it's like these crew chiefs that do a great job in a series and then they, they get hired to catch all the people that are cheating. That, but that's, that's a hard job. I would never want that (laughs) job, but it's, uh, um, I'm at a sports awesome and things of that nature. And it's just, uh, I just, I just don't want to play that side of the fence anymore. Man, you could sell some scores. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe not. <laughs> it's all hard to say, but they do certain damage at the yeah. point, you know. It's, you always hate to get into that, but that, that person put himself in that position to start yeah. with. So you do look at that, and you do look at their side. you got to look at all sides, oh, sure. and you got to go through there. It's just really how bad it is. And, um, of course, I like the new one. I mean, I, I've always said... If you're gonna uh, cheat, I, you know, full blown cheating, send them home. Gray areas, you get maybe work in a little bit, but I've always said that. I mean, local tracks on that you can call it cheating. You load your stuff up and go home. If you want to quit cheating in in any series, oh, you send them home. Yeah. That that'll make a big difference, and and I think they should. I don't yeah. think I don't care about the charters. I don't care about this. You got you got people going home that are struggling trying to make the races without the charters and why why should they be penalized because this guy cheated he's yeah. gonna be able to race that that's one thing i've always been on that side of it if you get yeah you know, i had that happen when a um, used to be a limited partnership on my home track i was on a, a competition direct board there <laughs> and they changed some rules on the board it wasn't just me i meant there was other yeah. other guys there and we're going into the season they changed a couple of rules that I didn't know about until I got to a track for opening night. Well, now my car's not legal. This was a body thing. And I was like, whoa. And you're on the comp. I was on the board. <laughs> and I was like, how did this happen? You know, yeah. and uh, so obviously I wasn't real happy about it, especially being in a partnership with the track. And so when I was practicing, obviously everybody noticed it. It was, it was on the nose piece and stuff. It was nowhere near legal, but it, that wasn't a rule yet. And they, I, I just, I ran practice. I'm going to run practice and run my tests. I just, I wasn't going to race. Still, I'm going to race. And they go, well, you know, but what if this? And I go, no, you can't do that. I said, how can I be on the rules committee? How can I be a limited partner in a track? And you allow me to race. I go, that's wrong. And I says, it wouldn't happen for anybody else. It ain't going to happen me. I loaded myself up and left. Yeah. I, and then they were mad. I was like, no, I'm mad. You changed. Somewhere there was miscommunication and rules, and yeah. my car wasn't legal. And I said, I'm not going to race it. I don't care even how much weight you put on me. It's not legal. And um, and I couldn't fix it in hours that were there. If I had overnight, I could have fixed it. But I couldn't do it then. I was like, it, it, I'm not going to race. I'm not going to put myself in that position. I'm going to put you in that position because it's going to be a... You know, we're, we're, we weren't good enough to win there. If I won that race, now I could have fixed it and, and probably still won the race. But but then you just got a bunch of conflict. You got competitors mad at you. You got people mad at you. And I was like, I'm, I'm not going to do that. So I, I did, my car went legal, so I loaded it up. 
Now, how do you spend most of your time these days? Um, I quit building cars about four years ago, so um, haven't done anything there, but I, just, I still do some fabrication work if somebody wants something done. A lot of it is outside of racing. Um, uh, one of the plumbing uh, companies there build all the racks for their new trucks, and you know I can whack those out in a couple days and then do what I want. Um, some of my friends own these, you know, whether it's different type of race cars, I'll do some work for them if they if they choose to. I'll build a road cage for them if they want inside these cars and do some machining, things of that nature. And then I just got done doing a big job for a brewing company and uh, doing some work on some of their um, machines and things of that nature and some welding. And so I, do, I just do, I, I turn stuff away and then I, I don't have yeah. a lot that comes in where it overbearings yeah. me, yeah. but if there's something, a job that I don't particularly want to do that, that I've done so many times, I may not do it. Some, if it's new and it's a new challenge, I may do it.